Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a drama, family, and fantasy film called Pinocchio. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a faraway land, there lives a poor carpenter named Geppetto. He makes a living out of carving wood and building anything out of it. One day, he heads to the town restaurant in hopes of earning more money to have a hearty meal. Inside, he sees some of his friends dining together but pays no mind to him. He tells Moreno, the owner, that the chairs and the table in the restaurant are no longer sturdy, and repairing it would be a great idea. Contrary to that, Moreno thinks that everything in his place is fine as is. Desperate to earn something, Geppetto insists that he will charge him a low price, but the owner dismisses him repeatedly. Upon exiting, he tries to convince Moreno that the door needs repair, but Moreno knows why Geppetto acts that way. He invites Geppetto to sit down and serves him a generous amount of soup and bread. Outside, he stumbles upon a puppet theater where a man advertises it to the townsfolk. He invites everyone to join the entertainment that night for an affordable price. Curiously, Geppetto takes a peek into the carriage to see the puppets, but the man pulls him away, as it will be a surprise to everyone. Another carpenter named Mastro Siliege is about to cut a single log into pieces when it suddenly moves. To his surprise, the magical log approaches him and causes him to fall down. At that moment, Geppetto arrives to ask him for some wood, and he sees his colleague in a state of shock. He questions him about what happened, but he says that everything is fine. Geppetto continues to tell him about his plans on creating a puppet, naming it Pinocchio, and touring it around the world to make a more decent living for himself. Still unable to bounce back from what he just saw, Siliija blankly listens to him and decides to give the magical log to his dear friend. Geppetto examines it, leaving him in complete disbelief that his friend would give him such a fine piece of wood for free. At home, he immediately starts carving the log into a human-like shape. The humble gift has given him a renewed vision and inspiration in life. While carving the puppet, he hears subtle noises coming from inside it, a heartbeat. Geppetto gets giddier to finish it, so he starts adding eyes and other parts that resemble the human body. He calls Pinocchio repeatedly and instructs it to say Baba which means father, but the puppet remains immobile. After some moments of silence, Pinocchio utters the word Babo, taking Geppetto back in happiness. He then runs outside to celebrate and let his neighbors that he is now a father. Excitedly, he comes back inside to do some finishing touches on his creation, even making clothes for him. At this point, Pinocchio is fully alive and conscious, to make him function to the fullest, Geppetto teaches him how to walk, but as he instructs the steps, Pinocchio runs outside. He possesses incredible speed, leaving his father behind worried as he slowly gets out of sight. Unfamiliar with the village, Pinocchio runs into a home where a talking cricket tries to help him by advising him about being an obedient child. The stubborn puppet gets fed up with the talking cricket and throws a wooden mallet at it, seriously injuring the creature. He continues to sit by the fireplace where he warms his feet, when Geppetto comes by the home only to hear Pinocchio crying for help, saying that his feet are gone after falling asleep by the chimney. Extremely worried, his father enters the house through a window to his rescue and sees almost half of his legs completely gone. Geppetto carries him home, then scolds him for running away and causing damage to his beautifully crafted body. Pinocchio begs him to make a new set of legs for him, but his father refuses. After some convincing, Geppetto gives in to his pleas in exchange for him going to school. The following day, Geppetto goes to the nearby store to get his son a spelling book that he needs for school. However, he does not have money to purchase it, making him hand over his jacket and waistcoat to educate his son. As they make their way to the school, Pinocchio gets distracted by the puppet theater station nearby before entering his class. Unknown to Geppetto, his son leaves upon seeing him return home. He tries to go inside the theater, but the man blocks his entrance because he has no money. Desperate to come in, Pinocchio sells his spelling book to the store owner for four coins and watches the puppet show afterward. Along with other children, he gets entertained by the show, especially that it's his first time seeing something of that kind. The stage puppets notice Pinocchio in the audience pretty soon and call him on stage as he is a puppet as well. They all welcome him with a big embrace, calling him their wooden brother, interrupting the show. A big man named Manjifuoko comes up on stage to end their brief celebration and let the show continue. He drags Pinocchio off the stage after finding out that he could move even without strings. Meanwhile, Geppetto awaits for his son outside the school, but the teacher repeatedly tells him that a boy named Pinocchio never entered his class. His worries grow bigger as the puppet theater is gone, and his son is nowhere to be found. To ask about the whereabouts of the theater, he approaches the store owner, who informs him that Pinocchio entered the theater to see the show. Geppetto suspects that they robbed his son because he was too well made and decides to set off on a journey to reunite with him. Mangifuoko sits in front of a bonfire in the middle of nowhere and instructs the other puppets to bring Pinocchio to him to use him as firewood to cook his dinner. Fearful of their master, the puppets abide against their will, one of them tells Pinocchio that to be saved, he should touch the master's heart and be nice to him. Pinocchio pleads with the puppeteer to let him go to return home to his father, undoubtedly worried about him. Showing emotion, Manjifuoko decides to let go of him but chooses to burn another puppet. However, Pinocchio is against the idea that someone should pay for something he did and accepts his fatal punishment. Surprised by Pinocchio's act of selflessness, Manjifuoko releases him, making all the puppets celebrate. At daybreak, Manjifuoko wakes Pinocchio up to give him five gold coins to give to Geppetto out of pity. Sadly, 
He bids goodbye to the other puppets who have given him a sense of belonging, even for a brief amount of time. In the rain, he makes his way home in hopes of reuniting with his father. Along the way, a cat and a fox are fishing by the river, he asks them for some help but gets ignored by them. After realizing that Pinocchio has five gold coins, they quickly approach the boy and suggest that he should plant the coins in the Field of Miracles, a place where they will sprout in a tree full of money. The duo continues to entice him about the idea as they walk to a restaurant, where the two devour significant portions of food. That night, Pinocchio dreams that they make it to the magical tree, and the three of them collect coins from its branches. His fantasy is cut short when the innkeeper wakes him up, saying that the cat and the fox are waiting for him at the end of the woods. Alone in the middle of the night, Pinocchio bravely walks alone to the meeting area when a familiar voice calls for him. The talking cricket has reappeared and continuously guides the boy. According to him, Pinocchio should retrace his steps and take the four remaining coins to his poor father. However, the boy refuses to believe the talking cricket who advises him to be vigilant of those who promise to make him rich in a blink of an eye. The stubborn Pinocchio has not changed his ways, he refuses to believe the cricket, who only wishes him safety, making him walk away to reach the woods. Towards the end of the forest, two hooded assassins chase him, leading him into an abandoned house. He desperately knocks at the door, but a ghostly girl from a window tells him that no one is home. Pinocchio asks for help from the girl, but she cannot do so because she is dead. Eventually, the two assassins grab the boy, forcing him to spit the coins out of his mouth. They then hang him on a tree and wait for him to die to get the coins quickly. Pinocchio dramatically remembers his father and instantly regrets being a disobedient child. At daybreak, while the assassins, who are the fox and the cat disguising themselves, are asleep, a mythical coachman named Medoro rescues Pinocchio from the tree and brings him to the abandoned house where the blue-haired fairy cares for him. A snail lady, one of her servants, welcomes two doctors and then Cricket to Pinocchio's room. While the doctors examine his health, the Cricket scolds him for not taking his advice seriously. After the three guests leave the room, the fairy lets him drink a medicine, which she claims will heal him in a few days. He hesitates to drink it because of its bitter taste and repeatedly says that he doesn't mind dying right then and there. Annoyed by his stubbornness, she summons four rabbits carrying a coffin, which Pinocchio gets afraid of. The four rabbits drag him out of bed, but he begs the fairy to give the medicine instead, taking back his death wish. In the dining room, the fairy questions Pinocchio about his journey and how he ended up in the magical place. He tells the fairy that he entered a puppet theater in the event that the school is closed, he also lied about not paying for his entrance in the puppet show. Suddenly, his nose becomes longer with each lie he tells, and he gets confused about this. Finally, the fairy reveals to him that every time he tells a lie, his nose will grow, she is then forced to shorten his nose after the things on the table are knocked over. She calls a flock of woodpeckers to do the job while Pinocchio watches, both amazed and embarrassed. He and the fairy share a special bond during his stay, forming an unexpected friendship between the two. The fairy sends him off to find his father, reminding him to find his way back to her after his reunion with Geppetto. Learning his lesson, Pinocchio returns home, where coincidentally, he meets the cat and the fox for the second time. The boy still has no idea that the duo is actually the hooded assassins who once put his life in danger. In an attempt to commence their evil plan for the second time, they lead him to the Field of Miracles once again, where they advise him to plant the coins and gather water for it. While he runs farther to get some water, the cat and the fox steal the buried coins, leaving the poor boy penniless. At the courthouse, Pinocchio reports the theft to the gorilla judge, who asks him what he wants to happen. The boy replies that he wants justice and for the five golden coins to be returned to him. Weirdly, justice does not favor the innocent in that place, putting Pinocchio into a life sentence. The gorilla repeats that in their place, the innocent go to prison. Desperate to find a way out, he says that he has committed a crime before, which practically makes him guilty. The gorilla rethinks about his sentence on Pinocchio, frees him of his sentence, and has him liberated. Pinocchio resumes his long journey home only to find out that Geppetto has left to search for him in every place possible and decides to search for him overseas in the Great Americas, thinking that he is still in the hands of Manjafuoko. Pinocchio gets to the shore and carelessly dives into the sea. However, he gets shipwrecked on an unknown island, where a hooded person carries him to safety. As Pinocchio gains consciousness, he gets up and sees the snail once again, and they embrace. The fairy enters the room, but now as a grown woman, reminding him that it is still her, his dear friend. While eating, Pinocchio tells the fairy that he does not want to be a puppet all his life, he wants to become a boy like the others. Feeling his sincerity, the fairy promises to turn him into a real human boy if he studies and behaves well. The following day, Pinocchio attends school right away, where the teacher scolds the disobedient boys. Another boy named Lucinello is brought to the classroom where he is punished as well. While the teacher writes on the board, the naughty boy places a frog behind him as a prank. Not long after that, the teacher notices the animal inside him, making the whole class break into laughter. This allows Lucinello to escape class, where Pinocchio follows and befriends him. That night, Pinocchio finds out that he is unwelcome to the fairy's home after discovering him skipping school. From then on, Pinocchio attends classes and becomes the most studious boy among his peers, making him an excellent student. This comes to the fairy's attention and commends Pinocchio for it, promising that she will grant his wish of being a real boy when tomorrow comes. 
Happily, he runs outside to invite his friends for a feast at the fairy's home. Suddenly, he hears a lady calling for Lucinulo, so he runs to him while his friend hides. He invites Lucinulo to his party, but he turns down the invitation because he is going to the land of toys where children like them can have unlimited fun without schools or adults. That night, Pinocchio decides to accompany his friend while waiting for a wagon to pass by, transporting him to the land of toys. His original plan is to stay in the village, but after seeing multiple boys on the way to have fun, he lets down his guard and decides to join their journey as well. All of them arrive at a mansion and immediately play and start having fun. They swim, chase each other, and do all sorts of fun activities while the light lasts. The coachman gives them a place to spend the night, where they still have their fun. The following day, Pinocchio wakes up with donkey ears and finds Lucinillo in the same situation, they are slowly turning into donkeys. Both of them fall to the ground, losing their balance as their arms and legs turn into hooves. While screaming for help, their faces become those of donkeys, and the coachman who lured them into the place exalts in joy. He sells them separately, Lucinillo remains unsold, while a businessman plans to purchase Pinocchio as the two friends cry upon being apart. The puppet turned donkey ends up in a circus and is used for entertainment to perform dangerous acrobatics. In the audience, the fairy watches the show, knowing that Pinocchio has suffered this sad fate. He trips and cripples himself while looking at the fairy from the stage. He is then brought out of the show after being lame and unentertaining. Moments later, the circus director decides to drown him and use his skin to assemble a drum. After he is thrown in the sea, the fairy summons a group of fish that nibbles away his donkey skin, bringing his appearance back to normal. In great confusion, the circus personnel sees Pinocchio float up, but as a boy, he swims away to search for his father despite the director's calls. In the middle of the vast ocean, Pinocchio's struggles are far from over. A terrible dogfish comes from behind him, and the ravenous sea monster swallows him alive. Inside the fish's belly, he calls out for help when a tuna, which was also swallowed, approaches him. It tells the boy that asking for help is useless, and the chances of getting out are little to none. According to the tuna, the only thing they can do is wait for the dogfish to digest them, which puts Pinocchio in a state of panic. He then notices a faint light back inside the fish's belly. Curious to find what it is, he approaches the end, and to his surprise, sees Geppetto also trapped inside. Despite their grave and almost inescapable situation, their unexpected reunion makes them celebrate for some time. The father and son embrace each other as tightly as possible after being apart for such a long time. Geppetto reveals to his son that living inside the fish is not so bad after all, because of the creature eating non-stop, swarms of fish enter its body, giving him enough food. Determined to escape, Pinocchio tells his father that life outside is much better and that there is still a way for them to get out. He brings his father near the fish's mouth and convinces him to take advantage of its open mouth while it sleeps. Geppetto is scared to come out because of his inability to swim, but Pinocchio assures him that he swims well, and as he is made of wood, he floats. Hesitantly, Geppetto finally agrees, and the both of them swim to safety with the help of the tuna. They swim until dawn and safely reach the shore, where he expresses his gratitude to the fish before it swims back to the deep. After miles of walking from the beach to the countryside, they spot an abandoned house where they could rest for the time being. They both lay in a makeshift bed, where Pinocchio realizes that his father is getting sicker. He goes to a nearby home, where a farmer hires him to earn milk for his father. He willingly works hard, which earns the farmer's respect. He comes back to the house to take care of his father's needs and continues to work for the following days while being trained. From then on, he starts earning money while he continues to study and help Geppetto, who is still recovering. Pinocchio once again meets the estranged fox and cat, now badly reduced and struggling with disabilities. Learning his lesson and growing smarter, he does not miss the opportunity to mock the duo and ignore their apologies. Geppetto and Pinocchio spend their peaceful lives together in simplicity, fully content with having each other. On a random day of tending to the sheep, the fairy appears out of nowhere to forgive the boy for all the troubles he got into. She reminds him to be wiser in the future so that he can live joyously. The fairy decides to grant Pinocchio his wish after they embrace, so she carefully lays him down to cast a spell that will turn him into a human. As he wakes up, Pinocchio is astonished to feel his skin, he rushes home, shouting that he is now a real boy. This catches his father's attention, so he looks outside and proudly sees his son, but this time, no longer a puppet but a real living boy. Both of them celebrate outside their humble home, and they live happily ever after. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.